Deadly fighting continues this morning between Israel and Hamas. Political analyst and Middle East security expert Rick Epps is joining us this morning. Rick, good morning and good to see you. Good morning, good to see both of you. All right, as we are sitting here right now, we've been reporting all morning that the airstrikes have intensified uh, in that area. We're at at least 1,600 who are dead. Over the past few days, spoken to many people, most everybody is saying, what is happening? How is this happening right now? Yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, the human, just the humanitarian aspect of it is disturbing enough from both sides, really, in terms of the civilians. Um, but, you know, this is a, you know, Hamas, uh, you know, with their surprise attack on Saturday, uh, for what they say is because of the uh, desecration of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, which is a holy site for both the Muslims as well as the Jews, uh, as the Temple Mount, right? Uh, as well as the treatment of the, what they allege, treatment of the women, and uh, also the incursions into Gaza, into their area. So that's what they're saying is the reason why they decided to escalate uh, uh, the attacks. Uh, and that's, you know, I mean, so we kind of have a rationale as to why. We, we, the question is, why now, yeah. right? Why now? Um, and I think that's an interesting story because, of course, it's real close to the Jewish holidays and the idea of this, almost 50 years from the Yom Kippur Wars. Uh, so it's a very lax time. It's been very quiet in, in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, when we get to, and I know we'll talk in a moment about the intelligence aspect, but, you know, people get pretty comfortable when things are kind of quiet for quite a while. And uh, this is the result of, you know, things being relatively quiet and then this escalation happens, uh, which is you know, tragic on both sides. When, whenever you're on with us as the political professor, this and that, you're right. an expert in this region. Seems like we've talked about this 10 years ago, we talked 15 years ago, we talked about yeah. this. Explain, give a lesson because you need to learn history and you need to learn about the region before you can understand anything that's going on here. Right. Who or what is Hamas? Right. How did that start? How did they end up in the Gaza Strip? How did they end up the Palestinians in the West Bank as well within Israel? How, how does all that, how did it come to be no. so that we're here today? <laughs> well, loaded question, yeah, I know, a but, yeah. but a lot of people don't know. Yeah, well, let's start with Hamas. So yeah. Hamas is really a splinter organization from the Palestinian Muslim Brotherhood uh, that had derived from the Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt, which, which formed in 1920s in the late 1920s. And then uh, in 1987, they split it off and, uh, and started their own organization, um, which then, over the next couple of decades, uh, seized power by the, by the early 2000s. And what happened was they were voted, they didn't seize, let me back up and say it another way. They were voted in by citizens who were tired of the corrupt government that existed prior to the inception of Hamas. So when they're, tired of the, of the corruption, they run another direction yep. and go to get someone who they think is going to you know, listen to the good rhetoric of the leaders of Hamas, and then they bring them into power. And then once you get them in power, it's hard to get rid of them. Very and, difficult to get rid of them. But you talk about these, these governments, <laughs> and it's interesting that you bring this up, because we were talking even about this yesterday a yeah. little bit, is yeah. that do the people in Palestine support Hamas? Well, that's interesting. If you look at the uh, about approximately 50% support, but even out of that 50%, if you look at the real numbers, I would say a good half of the ones who do support only support out of frustration against Israel, yeah. not because they they love Hamas or they may even fear Hamas. You know, because by even if you stand against them, they may decide to kill you or attack you if you are a dissident against them. So. You know, I would argue the numbers are probably more like 20 to 25 percent actually really support wow. Hamas. So uh, that adds up to what a million and a half people more are yeah. not in full support of what Hamas is doing right it's, now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, th th that's an important part of this too. Yeah. Uh, the way Israel is fighting back and, and, and understanding uh, why they have decided that this will be an all-out assault. Yeah. Uh, they, how does that work moving forward? Because if, if they end the bombing, no. uh, it seems like this is ongoing no. and it won't end here. Yeah, that's the unfortunate part with the number of Israelis that, that were killed, uh, which is significant and yeah. will increase over the next several days as they still find, look for bodies and depending on what happens with the hostages, right? Oh. 
Um, <clears throat> this could get really messy for a very long time. Uh, Israel, you know, they're talking about they've called up 300,000 reservists. Uh, there are allegations of that they may be, uh, may, there may be a ground assault. If that takes place, um, Israel has this notion of, of scorched retribution, scorched earth retribution. So I'm really concerned about that because of the fact that what that may lead to is the killing you know, of a lot of innocent people right. in the Gaza Strip. Uh, and, that, and then the, there's a long-term consequence for that as well. Very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. This whole region very, very complicated, yeah. so intertwined. Yeah. Uh, Iran has come up quite often over the past few days and yeah. their involvement yeah. uh, in this attack. What do we know about Iran's involvement? Well, <clears throat> there are assertions, and it's certainly been made public, that Iran has, of course, has always funded Hamas, along with uh, also Turkey and Qatar have also been peripheral funders, but Iran is the primary. Uh, and, you know, in this, we recognize that there's a, there's, a, there's a game, political game behind this, which a lot of people may not be aware of, where there are, there are peace talks between Saudi Arabia and Israel right now. Uh, with the United States in, you know, the, uh, in, in involved in this process. Iran does not want to see that. Hamas does not want to see that take place. So by destabilizing the situation, um, it certainly impedes the possible success of having that relationship evolve if Saudi Arabia was to recognize Israel. Iran does not want to see that happen. So by sort of pushing Hamas to go down this road, is a very plausible yeah. notion. But just this morning, uh, I believe it was the president yeah. who came out and, and denied any involvement whatsoever yeah, of course. In, <laughs> in this attack. Yeah. Well, they don't, of course, they, all they do is give money and say, here's some, you go take care of mm -hmm. things, right? And that's typically how it happens. So I wouldn't be surprised by we, that. <laughs> we've heard a lot of the, the leadership and, and resident in Israel say that this is their 9 11. We, they've yeah. described it that way, yeah. uh, you know, twofold, threefold 9 11. Yeah. Uh, in terms of intelligence yeah. failures, that's been a topic of conversation. You, you would, you, you think always the U.S. and Israel have the top intelligence in the world, yeah. and yet this somehow happened. I was reading that maybe the Hamas they went off the grid, they yeah. went dark yeah. in order to make this attack work. Uh, was there an intelligence failure on both parts of Israel and the U.S.? And how does that happen? Well, it's interesting. On one hand, you, there's obviously a failure somewhere, but if, remember, the most important type of intelligence, it's interesting. When people look at intelligence, they always think, well, the technology is the right. best thing, right? Drones and yeah. all the tech, people, you know. All, right. yeah. But the reality is human intelligence yeah. is still the best intelligence. It's inconceivable that, that there was no one who was telling anything. Uh, that's, there's usually, even if there's a small percentage of people who will always divulge information. Um, however, as I mentioned earlier, when you have, it was very quiet in the Gaza Strip recently, and even for the best intelligence agencies, and Mossad is known to be one of the best, you can get sort of comfortable, and you know, then all of a sudden, even the best can become lax in moments like this, and you know, again, they will vet that out in the yeah. next, you know, few months. But you don't uh, want to say complacency, but no. it had been ten years of, yeah, every, everybody's good, everybody's good, always looking over, but. Yeah. And then that well in the Middle East also what you'll find in most of the region that when there's retribution it doesn't yeah. happen instantaneously right, right. right they will sit back and wait a long time till you're very comfortable and then smack you in the head and that smacking <clears throat> unfortunately yeah. happening to so many yeah. innocent people yeah so really, many innocent it's people. tragic it really is tragic but it usually happens in a war it's the innocent and, and it's just oh, it's sad to see and then this time more than ever you with the videos you see the same thing in Ukraine where you've never oh. seen the videos on social media as much as you're seeing now coming out of Israel, coming out of Gaza, coming out of everywhere. Well, then what happens with this and the, the long, you know, if, if, I may, if I may, the yeah. long, the long term consequence of this will, could be it, you create more terrorists, right? If the more, the more Palestinians you kill, the more terrorists you're going to create. And then this also fortifies Israel against those people. So then it just feeds on itself. And then you have an unending crisis that goes on generation after generation. Before we let you go, I want to talk about long-term consequences yeah. and involvement of other countries and yeah. potential for this to become an even bigger conflict yeah. worldwide. Yeah. Well, I mean, there are peripheral players who are making very bellicose statements about, well, if, we, if the U.S. gets involved, then we're going to, you know, step in. Most of that is political jockeying. Uh, 
the consequences of that happening would be too traumatic uh, and it would take it out of a regional crisis yeah. and take it into a bigger crisis beyond that. Certainly you look, you know, Britain, France, Germany, uh, certainly the United, United Kingdom are all supporting U.S. who are sending supplies and other you know, items to Israel. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see how China, what China does, but China usually doesn't get involved <clears throat> in the human rights aspects. So I imagine they'll sit back and <clears throat> kind of wait and see. Right. But the U.S. Uh, is already is going to unwaverly uh, keep their commitment to Israel in this. Okay. Rick Epps, uh, we thank you. Thank, thank you very much. much. We'll talk with you again, I'm sure, as yeah. it uh, continues to play out right thank before you. our eyes. Thank you. Rick, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Stay with Fox 5, of course, as we continue our coverage of the war between Israel and Hamas. You can get updates on air and by downloading the Fox 5 app. We'll be right back.